Hi guys, welcome to the third and last part of our tutorial. So, what we need to do right here is to initialize this NS mutable array. The way you do it is like this. Now, you also need um, you also need to populate the feed URL. So we're gonna go to the H file. This is the feed URL that we actually need to populate. And we're going to do it in this file. And we're just gonna paste some code exactly right here. And that is going to populate, or yeah, to initialize with a value of feed URL. First of all, we prepared the function. So this is prepared for SIGWI. And then we're gonna populate our variable that is from the collection view controller that is n news list. So what I want, I want to copy this part, which is the part of the cast that I want to have right here. This is a pointer, and I'm going to change this to a name. And what I want is Sigui. Yeah, Sigui destination controller right here and now I need to get the index that has been selected the way to do it now this is the code to get the index that of the selected item now we also need to get the feed URL from our array and pass it to this object right here so you just do this basically Okay, now we have the code to get the index. Please pay attention to the fact that I'm getting, I'm just changing something a little bit right here. I'm getting the nth index path, and from that index path, I just get the row, so that will give me the row that has been selected. And from that index, I'm gonna search into my feed array and get which one is selected and get its URL and feed it to the next view controller. Hopefully that's, that's good enough. Now what I want to do is, I'm just going to save those two files, I want to go back to my file right here, and I'm going to have to add pretty much something similar to what we did in the other view controller, collection view controller, which is actually to populate, uh, I'm going to need about three functions to populate uh, my uh, news feed. So I'm just going to pass the code right here. Okay, now I have my three functions that I've added for the collection view data source. So basically what it means, it means that uh, once this array has been populated after the XML parse has been parsed, I'm going to take that content and fill my collection view. So I get the, count, the, the counting, which is the total. We did something similar in the uh, uh, collection view that when we were populating it. I'm in the section, and now we just populate the three fields that I show you. One last thing, this is the identifier of the cell that we are using, so we need to make sure that it has the right name. So I'm going to copy the name right here, go back into the main storyboard, found my cell, this is my cell, and make sure the identifier is the same. So now I can just go ahead and run it. So I do command run into the simulator and I'm gonna see if you'll be able to populate so I get on my head my headline and it didn't populate it this is not a problem I know exactly why so I'll go back here first thing is the function that's gonna call the parser is right here but it's never been called itself so I'm gonna call it in the view did appear so here's the code to do it and I'm going to launch the simulator again, click here, and up. Oh, guess what? I have all my feeds. Now the last part is that when I click on this, I'm going to load another view controller, and that view controller will have a web view, and we're just going to display the content from the website of uh, the associate press. So I'm going to go quickly back into my main storyboard. I'm going to need a regular view controller 
and in a regular view controller I want to have a web view inside and that should be it so when I click on this guy so I'm gonna hold the key control click with my mouse and drag here and it's gonna be a push when I click on this guy I'm gonna load this guy passing uh, the link of the article and this article will be loaded from the website okay uh, control save I'm gonna have to generate the classes that go with this guy okay so we're gonna do something that is really similar to what we did before right click new file objective C class I want a regular UI view controller that I'm going to call in content view controller next save bam I have it right here I'm pretty happy with that I just want to associate it with the right class there you go so I can see it has the right name right here and right now right now this guy is a uh, content view controller we obviously need to have the URL so I'm gonna go into the header file and paste this code it's gonna be the content of the URL now I also need to link this we did that before so I'm gonna hold this key like this okay so I want to click here so I can have a full view of my class and double click on this main storyboard hold the control key and drag it right here and I'm going to call this a web view connect I'm pretty happy with that now I also need to to when when this web view appears I need to populate it so the way to do it I'm just going to paste some code right code is going to go exactly here paste view did appear content URL request that's all you need to populate it but obviously we also need this guy to have some meaningful value and this is going to happen from this class when we do the prepare screen as we did before so I'm gonna paste the code exactly right here here we go notice that it doesn't recognize this end content view controller so we just need to import it right here h we scroll back down and you can see that it's good so i believe from this we should have something fairly working so let's just go ahead and test it i'm gonna do, do command run plus success click here we already had this working this is what is new click and yeah so I've got what I want. I have my web view and it's actually loading right here. So that should conclude at least the main part of our tutorial. So if you have a little bit more time, you can go back into the main storyboard and skin things a little bit. So you can make this thing a little bit bigger. You can change uh, the font the colors, you want it to be red this date you can actually format it but that will require actually for me to to show you a little bit more about the, that date formatting but you get the idea, I can just scan it a little bit this is pretty quick and it's pretty big for my taste okay so I'll just run it again and see how it looks like yeah, it looks a little bit better, at least to me. <laughs> and I still have my uh, 
yeah, my, my uh, content from the website. So this should conclude our tutorial. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to put the source code into uh, my website, which is going to be uh, uh, moo.mobi, uh, uh, www.muh.mobi. And that should be it. Thank you for watching.